burying a bone in Mrs. Earthly's zinnias. Who's burying a bone, dear? That bachelor's dog from 10B. I think it's going to be hotter than yesterday. They found another. Another what, dear? Body wrapped in a blood-stained blanket. The fourth inside of a month must be a fiend. Women are warned not to go out after dark until the Greenwich Village murderer has been caught. Greenwich Village murderer, indeed. He's probably from uptown. I, for one, shan't set foot out of this building. We've always been safe so far. There they are now. Oh, dear. The Earthlies. You forgot the sugar again. Oh. Yes, dear. He forgot the sugar again. He's so forgetful. That old maid on the 12th floor is watching us again. She's there every morning at 8.05 like clockwork. Don't look now, Arthur. Ooh. Oh, well. Oh, yes. It's Saturday. Oh, we're in for another scorcher. Should be cooler in Connecticut. I do wish you were coming with me. Ah, oh, May. Well, I was only thinking of your comfort. Cecilia does have that breeze from the river. Well, the river gets that breeze from Cecilia. <laughs> Arthur, you know I don't like jokes about my sister. My train leaves at 6.30. You'll be there on time. Of course, dear. Oh, I hate leaving you alone. If it weren't Cecilia's anniversary, but you must admit, in the seven years we've been married, I haven't let you alone very often. That's right, dear. And I appreciate it. Arthur, can't you read your newspaper on the bus? I'd like to read it sitting down. Arthur, you're not going to smoke. But this is not in the house. All right, if you must be technical, I'll bring you an ashtray. Arthur! Look! My zinnias! Oh, it's that dog, that office dog. Mm -hmm, you see? A bone. He's buried a bone. Keep that for evidence. Oh, my poor, poor little zinnias. Arthur, that dog has got to go. This time you must be firm. <laughs> what do you expect me to do about it? What any man would do to protect his own home. This calls for action. Of course, if you're afraid. Uh, of course, I'm not afraid. I, well, I, I'll talk to him. Here, here, here. Arthur, why don't you answer it? Hello, Gallio? This is your neighbor, Arthur Earthley. My wife just unearthed a bone in a flower box. Tell her if no one calls for it in 30 days, she can keep it. The bone happens to belong to your dog. Tell your wife she can keep the bone. I'll get my dog another. But she doesn't want the bone. Then why did she dig it up? Now, see here, Gallio. You've got to keep him off this terrace. No, no. He's no. got to get rid of him. You've got to get rid of him. Get rid of Rabelais? I'll get rid of you first. Indeed, sir. And just how do you propose to do that? There are ways, Mr. Earthley. You've got to get rid of that dog today. Now, uh, give him away. Sell him. Mr. Gallio, please. Such language. My wife is right at my elbow. And I'll bet she is annoying on Rabelais' bone, no doubt. Now, look here, Mr. Earthley. I don't mind your wife stealing my dog's bone, but... If you'll return that bone to me in first-class condition, I'm willing to forget the whole thing. What's the matter? He wants the bone back. Arthur, really? Mention the renting agent. Hmm. Gallio, if you don't do what we say, I'll notify the renting agent immediately. Oh, come on, now, Earthly. After all, we are neighbors. We both live on the tenth floor. Do me a favor, will you? Jump off! <laughs> Well? He hung up? Well, don't just stand there like a totem pole. Do something. I'll do something. What? Oh, well, I'll see my lawyer. Fine. And tell him about the parade of women that streams through that bachelor's apartment day and night. Oh, those are his models. 
Oh, some of them must be. I'm looking for Mr. Gary. I know. 10B. Step in. But how did you know I wanted Mr. Gallio? Well, because you've got the face and the uh, figure for 10B. I have? Mm-hmm. Come in. Hello, Rabelais. Well, it's about time you got here. Mr. Gallio, I'm Deborah Tyler. I, uh... Tried to get you on the phone, but you're not listed, so I... That's all right. I'll be right with you. Just take off your clothes. I beg your pardon. Get undressed. As soon as I finish breakfast, we'll go to work. Oh, just a minute, please. Oh, I bet you forgot to bring a bathing suit, hmm? Well, there are a couple in there. Mr. Gallio, I'm not a model. I came to see you about Rabelais. Rabelais? Did he bury a bone in your zinnias, too? What? Did Arthur Earthly send you? Who? That guy next door. He just phoned me about Rabelais. Has he made you an offer? I'll meet any terms he may have proposed. You can have your choice, a flat rate, pick of the litter, or both. Say, uh, who are you, anyway? Deborah Tyler. I own Zantippi. That's so? What's Zantippi? My prize shepherd. Oh. When your Rabelais took best of breed at the Philadelphia show, I'm from Philadelphia, I decided then my Zantippi must someday meet your Rabelais. That's why I'm here. Uh, just a minute, Miss Tyler. Rabelais, leave the room. You see, there's a little wolf in Rabelais, and I wouldn't want him to get the wrong impression. Oh, I see. Now, what's your proposition? Anything you ask. Anything? Yes, I'll give anything to arrange this match. Sold. You haven't named a price. Well, you see, Rabelais really doesn't need any money. He leads a very happy life here in the village. He has all the bones he can possibly handle, and I don't want puppies. Mr. Gallio, I came here on business. Art is my business. I would like you to pose for me. You're not serious. Why not? You pose for me, as Aunt Tippy gets Rabelais, and they live happily ever after. But I don't know that... You have an interesting neck. Your hands are good. Whilst the face could be a little longer. It will be a little longer if you don't get serious. We'll try some quick sketches, just as you... No, no. Better get into a bathing suit. No, but I, I have a fitting at 10.30 and I'm shopping and a luncheon date and... I thought you were so crazy to have Zantippi meet Rabelais. Oh, I am, but... Well, then let's not waste time talking. I think I can find a bathing suit that'll fit you. Some iced tea, dear? Oh. Relaxing always makes me so tired. It isn't the relaxing. I think the heat takes it out of us. He's got another. Another what, dear? Another girl. This one's prettier than that redhead he had Thursday. In broad daylight, where do they think they are parading around like that? Nobody's forcing you to look, dear. Doris will never believe this. Doris? A friend I'm visiting. We were roommates at Bryn Mawr. Oh, I think half profile would be better for this. The light in your eyes is nicer from that angle. Sorry. I just felt like doing what comes naturally. Naturally. I really must be going. Why, you've missed your fitting, your lunch date and your tea date. I can still make my cocktail date if I hurry. Oh, phone them and tell them to come over here. I'll whip up some cocktails. Please let me go. Doris is waiting. Ah, I wonder what we ever saw in her, Rabelais. She has ice in her veins. I know. I'll stop to get you going away, President. Oh, chocolates. Arthur, you know what they do to my figure. 
I'll bet you forgot to see the lawyer. No, I didn't. Saw him first thing this morning. You did? What did he say? Well, we may be better off than we thought. He's having the renting agent write a letter to Gallio. And if he doesn't get rid of his dog, we can have him evicted. Oh, wonderful. I've always wanted that apartment for Cecilia. Well, I take back that better off. I, uh, I bought you a book so you'll have something to do while I'm away. Above reproach by Douglas Lord. Mm, it's quite good. I read the first three chapters under the dryer. Uh, well, then I'll start with chapter four. Uh, my train comes in tomorrow night at 10.15, Arthur, and try to be on time. Shall we synchronize our watches? Now, remember, don't rush around in the street. Don't spend over $2 for dinner. Nothing fried in deep fat and no spaghetti. <laughs> well, goodbye and have a good time. Goodbye. You have a good time. Yeah, where? I guess there's no room. Oh, we got lots of room. Just to wait ten minutes. You can enjoy yourself by the bar. I don't drink. Well, uh, you can eat some peanuts. Check the gentleman hat. Uh, this way, please. Yes, sir. Oh, no, thanks. I'm just waiting for a table. On the wagon. Those are uh, habit-forming, too. Above reproach. I don't believe it. Sounds ghastly. Well, I, I haven't read it yet. Did I hear you say you were on the wagon? So am I. Technically, this is a health drink made with lemons and cucumbers and juniper berries full of vitamins. A couple of these before every meal and you'll never have scurvy. A couple of those and you'll never have the meal. Danny, we want more vitamins. No, oh, no, no, not for me. Just ginger ale. Ginger ale? Oh, that's very bad for you. Do you know what happens to people who drink ginger ale? <coughs> Fix him one of these, Danny. Well, no, really, I... Do you want to have scurvy? Well, no. You see, I've got to be very careful. I'm at heart. I'm liable to pop off. Right in the middle of a conversation. That's too bad. I, I'm awfully sorry. Well, here's to us. Good? Well, it's it's like... Like, uh... It's like drinking a spring twilight. Hey, that's very poetic. I used to write poetry when I first came to the village. It didn't pay. Then I drifted into interiors. You know my shop, Olive and Patricia Interiors. I'm Olive. If you ever need any chances, think of me. Well, it wouldn't take a chance to make a man think of you. <laughs> Shall we switch to martinis? Well, would they mix with this? They better, or I'll complain to the management. Your table is ready, sir. Oh. Oh, no, let me. I invited you. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. I insist. Well, all right. Charge it, Danny. And now, you must have dinner with me. I'll pay for dinner. Thanks. He's at it again. In all this heat? Nothing bothers him. Well, aren't you glad you stayed? Where else in New York could you dine so comfortably? <laughs> Just how long will it take to finish this painting of me? Ah, who knows? Da Vinci took 20 years to paint a Mona Lisa. You're right. It's absolutely wrong. Thank you, sir. 
to us, Duke. You know what he charged for that brandy? Ninety cents a shot. Why, I have a fifth of really fine brandy at my apartment, and it only costs six sixty. Imagine the profits they make here. Why, there must be a hundred shots of brandy in a bottle at ninety cents a shot. Why, that's nine hundred dollars a bottle. Either their profit is enormous, or my arithmetic is lousy. Did you say you had some brandy at your apartment? Olive, you have a fine memory. Uh, would you... I mean, I'm just around the corner at 35 East. Uh, would you... Uh, you talked me into it. Let's go. Uh, well, I think it would be better if you followed me. I mean, uh, our going in together might start the elevator boy talking. You make it sound very intriguish. 35 East, apartment 10A. Oh, and... Uh, Here's a, a dollar for the cab. You better call a taxi. Taxi? Uh, not in here, outside. Uh, well, au revoir. <laughs> Keep the change, my good man. Nice poochie. My good woman, that dog is not a pooch. And I am not your good woman, so that makes us even. Ken? Yes, please. Greenwich Village fiend still at large. Story on page nine. Would you like me to turn to page nine? Yes, please. A girl just isn't safe on the streets anymore, is she? You're so right. Who knows where the fiend may strike next? On a deserted sidewalk, under a shadowy tree? Or even in a crowded elevator? Are you following me? I'm sorry to disappoint you, madam, but I'm not a Greenwich Village murderer. Well, you slay me. To say. Sachet. That you, Olive? Hi, you cookie. Are you that glad to see me? Well, it's a little late, Olive, and I was afraid that, that I wasn't coming. Uh don't be silly, Arthur. Oh, how did you know? You forgot your book. Oh. Your name is in it. Arthur. Arthur of the Round Table. My knight in shining spectacles. So this is where you live. Your wife decorated? Yes. I like it. It's in such exquisite bad taste. I could have fun with this room. I don't want to have fun with the room. I'd like to have a little fun in it. <laughs> what is it? Ooh, put that down. May likes to find things just as she left them. May may not find anything the way she left it. I was enticed to this place with the promise of some very good brandy. Hmm. Here it is. You know, brandy is very good for my heart. My doctor says it's a, a vascular dilator. And my heart is liable to stop like that if I don't have brandy periodically. You don't think you've had too much? Not too much. Or I couldn't say periodically. <laughs> I like it here. With a few changes, you could live in it. What are you doing? Oh, it's a lovely piano, Arthur. Why hide it? Did you buy it on time? Oh, it's after 10.30. No music. Oh, stop acting like a babysitter. Oh, give it uh, my wife's pineapples. Relax, Arthur, and have some fun. You'll live longer. Sit down, Arthur, and be comfortable. You know something. I'm beginning to like you a lot. You're cute. 
Well, I like you too, Olive. And I like you too, Arthur. You know, if I really let myself go, I could fall in love with you. But I'll bet you're used to having women tell you that, aren't you? Well, it's been some time. Has it? Now we're alone. Could I get you some coffee? Caffeine is very bad for my heart. Well, I think I better make some for myself. Don't run away, Arthur. Come over here closer. You're beginning to blur. Uh, Olive. Yes, Arthur. Let's call it an evening, shall we? Okay. It's an evening. Uh, I mean, I, I think I better take you home. That's taking a lot for granted. Why? How do you know I've got a home? Well, I. You're the cutest thing. Olive, I'm going to take you home. Say, are you trying to give me the brush off? Well, not exactly, but... If you want me to go, just say so. I can take a hint. <laughs> a house doesn't have to fall on my head. I'll take you. Oh, no, you won't. It's got to be a clean break. No long, drawn-out farewells. Oh, isn't that just like a man? Send me out into the night without my shoes. I thought you were the one friend I could call my friend, but you're just like all the rest. I'll get a taxi. Don't bother about me. I'll be all right. Get me a taxi. Take me home. Gallantry, gallantry. Gallantry is dead. Cold, stone dead. I hate men, all men. Cruel, heartless, hideous. Promising this and promising that. Then welching this and welching that. You. I'm talking to you. I'm not dressed yet. Is the lock stuck? Should I call the janitor? No. I'll open it. You don't have to. I'll be out in a minute. Good morning. Special. Oh, thank you. I signed for it. Well, give it to me and hurry up. Here I come. But my head is bending low. What are you doing here? Dressing. Zip me, please. <gasps> That, why, that belongs to me. It's a favorite house coat. Mine, too. My dress is a sight. You shouldn't have let me sleep in my clothes, Arthur. Zip me. Oh, I thought you'd gone home. Why didn't you? And leave you all by yourself to face the morning after alone? What have you done to the guest room? Why, you, you've changed everything. Where are all the doodads? I mean, the, the things that were on the things. You mean all those antimacassars and doilies? Oh, I stashed him away in one of the bureau drawers. Ooh, I hope I can remember where everything was. Where are you this morning, aren't you? You need some breakfast. I'm not hungry. What a lovely, lovely morning. Let's go for a drive in the country. You do have a car, don't you? Yes, I do, Olive. You want me to take you home? You should go home, you know. Should I? 
If I didn't distinctly remember your asking me up here, I'd think I wasn't welcome. Don't you like me anymore, Duke? Oh, yes, but it's Sunday. So it is. So it is. But it's a lovely Sunday. Let's have breakfast on the terrace. Oh, no, 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 you mustn't. Why not? I'll bet it's a lovely view. You can't go out there. What do you mean, pushing me around? You can't push me around like an old beach umbrella. Look, if I give you breakfast, will you go home? Fine. Just uh, some Melba toast and brandy. Don't go to any trouble. I'm going to have some black coffee, and you're going to have some, too. Oh, no, you don't. Just because you're a caffeine addict, don't think you can drag me down with you. Oh, Olive, please stay sober. Doctor's orders, Duke. Hmm. You forgot your special delivery. Who? Hmm. From May? No, my lawyer. What did you do? It's about a dog, a neighbor's dog. I'll start the coffee. Copy of letter to Mr. David Gallio. Dear Mr. Gallio, acting on the complaint of your neighbors, you must either dispose of your dog within 24 hours or vacate the premises immediately. Good morning. Come in, Deborah. This is Sunday, and you are Mr. Gallio, the impulsive young artist just panting to paint me. 24 hours. Dispose of my dog. Why, I'll tear them limb from limb and the drabbily bury their bones. Remember me? The name's Tyler. Deborah Tyler. We met yesterday. You asked me to pose. Oh, what are you bringing that back for? Don't you know it's your death warrant? Here, read this. That's what's the matter with me. They can't do this. Or can they? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going next door and crack that guy's skull. I wouldn't do that. Why not? Let them send me to jail. That wouldn't solve the problem. What do you want me to do? Gather up my dog, put my tail between my legs and sneak out? David, you've got to be sensible about this. Sensible? You mean let them walk all over me? Let them tell me how to live and where? Go ahead, let off steam. But I think my way's better. And what is your way? Well, it's the dog they object to, right? Why not give Rabelais a little vacation in the country? While he's gone, we'll find a place that likes dogs. What do you mean, a little vacation in the country? I know just the place in Westchester. Zantippi was there for her first litter. It's very nice. A kennels? I won't do it. I won't put Rabelais into a kennels. Out of boy. Come on, boy. Give him Zantippi's quarters. Those were nice. Goodbye, Rabelais. If you want anything, just bark. He'll be all right, really, and you'll have him back very soon. I'm going to be lost without him. I know. I've always had a dog myself. Debbie, will you stick with me for the rest of the day? You mean sort of take your dog's place? <laughs> I'm afraid you could never take his place. <laughs> well, thanks for the trade last. Why, Ravelli's almost human. So am I. Well, seriously speaking, you don't know how much I think of that dog. Yes, I do. I'll stick with you. Good. Duke. No. My wife arrives in 45 minutes. You know how wives are. I know. Your wife doesn't understand you. I bet she wouldn't even understand me. Well, I'll never give her that chance. Oh, Duke, please, we've got to hear that song just once more before we part. But we haven't time. Arthur, it's our song. Haven't you any sentiment? I haven't time for sentiment. Pardon me. Play it just once more, Hannah, please. Sure. Love. 
love will say howdy to you out of the blue. Then should he linger? Who cares if he's a Not out of the blue He could be behind you He could look but never find you Maybe you're the one The one who's in the dark Get yourself a moonshine You may see him Isn't this better than the Stardust Room? All those people rubbing elbows? Mm -hmm. It's been a lovely evening. Why the past tense? The evening is just beginning. Oh, David, you have a one-track mind. Why don't you want to be kissed? You might be habit forming. Oh, and what do I have to do? Get into striped pants and cut away and wait for you at the altar while you drift down the aisle in orange blossoms and lace? Just for a kiss? Not at all. Just a simple country wedding would suit me fine. Debbie, I value your intelligence too highly to insult you with any rash offers of marriage. <laughs> Are men still saying that to girls? <laughs> what makes you so wise, that college degree? Did they give courses in the technique of love? Huh? Yes, David. And I majored in resistance. <laughs> I drank all yours up, and I thought maybe your wife would ask questions. Look, Olive, I've got to meet the train. I was just leaving to go to the station. Maybe you better keep the brandy. But we didn't have our farewell toast. Olive, please, the train. You didn't have to sneak out on me. Well, I was nervous. I wanted to check up to see that everything was in order. Well, why didn't you say so? I'd have been glad to come back and, and help you. Well, it's all finished now. Shall we leave? Just one last one for farewell, Arthur. It'll only take a minute. But I've washed all the glasses. No drink, no go. Olive, my wife's train is traveling in this direction at 90 miles an hour. I don't care if your wife's train runs right through this room. Do I get my drink? <laughs> OK. If you leave as soon as you've had it. You know what I like to drink to, Arthur? I like to drink to Mrs. Average Housewife, the backbone of our nation. Is your wife the backbone of our nation? You leave May's backbone out of this. All right, then let's drink. Yeah, uh, just drink. No conversation. All right, Arthur. Now we're signing off. Hospitality is dead. Cold stone death. Cut yourself a piece of moonlight. Out of the blue. Oliver, oh, stop that. Arthur, I just realize something. I love you. You can't. It's too late. I only have a few minutes to meet the train, and May will be oh, furious. Oh, May, May. We've done nothing wrong, Arthur. If you want me to, I'll stay right here and explain the whole thing to May. You don't even joke about such a thing. You, you are joking, aren't you? You men are all alike. Only thinking of yourselves. You take the best years of a girl's life. I haven't known you for years. Certainly not the best years. The principle remains the same. I'm not getting any younger, Arthur. That's completely irrelevant and non sequitur. You watch your language, Mr. Earthly. Just because you picked me up in a public bar doesn't mean I'm not a woman with a woman's feelings. Oh, Olive, will you listen to reason? We've got to get out of here. 
You pushed me. All right, I pushed you. I apologize. But get up. We've got to go. I wouldn't go anywhere with you. I wouldn't be seen walking in public. I'm going to count three. And if you don't get out of here, I... One. You ought to be ashamed of yourself threatening me, you fiend. And me with a weak heart. I feel faint, Arthur. Well, you're not fooling me. Two. Arthur Earthly. It isn't even a name. It's a lisp. Three. Four. You're going home right now. Six. Quiet. Shh. Seven. Chalala. 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 Arthur Earthly, you're too physical. Please. You're going. for disturbing you, but I thought you'd like to know. There's a body on your terrace. A dead body. Oh, thank you very much. Just leave it there. So? How did she get here? Get some smelling salt from the medicine chest. Ah, feeling any better? How did I get here? You tell me. Oh, I know you. You're the man with the dog. I used to be. There were no smelling salts, so I brought brandy. I'll forgive you. Say, do you know a man about so low by the name of Earthly? Sure, he's my neighbor. He struck me. He struck you now. He knocked me cold, or else I fainted. You see, I have a bad heart, and when I pass out, I really pass out. People tell me I look positively dead. Then Earthly must have thought he killed you. So he dumps you on my terrace. Why, that's terrible. I never heard of such a thing. How do you like that? You can't even bury a bone on his terrace, but he can throw his old dead bodies on mine. Who's an old dead body? Well, he thought you were. Oh. Isn't he a heel, though, that earthly? Why, I might really have been dead. We ought to report him to the police. Oh, no, don't do that. This scandal would ruin me socially. I'm afraid it's too late. Sounds like somebody's already called the police. Wait a minute, girls. This may be my chance to get back Rabley. You'll have to help me, Deborah, and you too. Anything you say, handsome. It's right in line with my good neighbor policy. Now listen. Mr. Place? Tenth floor. We don't need the assistance of the Junior Crime Club. Yes, but I'm the one who found the body, and I'm the accomplice. You're what? I mean, we live together just above the crime. Okay, you two. 
The rest of you go on home and listen to your radios. You'll hear about it faster that way. Come in. We're from Homicide, and we'll have to take a look at your terrace. I'll take it. Oh, was one of you ladies the one who thought she saw a body on my terrace? I saw it. <laughs> I'm afraid the lady's mistaken. No, I'm not. I definitely saw a body. Is this the body? Well, is it? Well, come on, was it? Well, it looked more dead. Hysteria, no doubt. No, I tell you, I saw a woman's body lying prone on that terrace. I always lie prone after posing. It relaxes me. Oh. Well, I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Well, we're sorry we've disappointed you. We'll try to do better the next time. I'd have sworn it. If I hadn't seen her alive, I'd have sworn she was dead. Come, dear. Nobody's got better eyesight than I have. She was lying flat on her <laughs> Success. Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh, there's a body in there. A body? <laughs> Girls, I want you to meet my first wife. I keep her here purely for sentimental reasons. How do you do? <laughs> you ought to feed her better. She looks anemic. My first model when I couldn't afford a live one, given to me by an artist who could. Tell her to post. Poor thing, I know just how she feels. This whole thing has unnerved me terribly. I'm just a bundle of nerves. You don't mind if I take a little of your stimulant, do you? Another minute in that closet and I'd have had an attack. I'll just have to start taking better care of myself. You know, Olive, I'm very glad you unearthed this dummy. They are about the same size. She's skinnier. She's our corpus delicta. She's been in that closet too long. It's about time she had a decent burial. Cecilia's coming in tomorrow to look at that man's apartment. I hope he is stubborn about that dog so we can have him evicted. Good evening. Too bad you folks didn't get here sooner. You missed all the excitement. Ow! Arthur, be more careful. What excitement? The police just left. The old maids on 12 found a body. The old maids? How did it get there? If those old maids found a body, they wouldn't report it to the police. It was on the terrace next to yours. Gallios. One of his models, I understand. You mean she was murdered? Well, it was yeah, just... Wait a minute, son. We don't care to hear any more. This is none of our affairs. Yeah, but, but Dad, that... never mind. Okay. As soon as I hang up my good things, I'm going to call those two old maids and find out what really happened. Oh, no, no, May. Let's keep our noses out of this. Why, it might be a nasty scandal. What are you so nervous about? Hmm? You've been nervous ever since you met me, five minutes late. Something wrong? Oh, no, everything is lovely. It's, uh, well, it's just that I'm so happy to have you home. Oh, how sweet. Did you have an awful time without me? Yes, May, you have no idea. Uh, I think I'll get a little fresh air. your dog it's out of my hands it isn't about my dog it's about a dead body a dead body yes i found a body on my terrace about an hour ago an hour ago it was still warm you don't say mm -hmm. how did she get there oh you're brilliant earthly how did you guess it was a she oh well so many of them lately are exactly and i might be suspected of all those murders what do you suppose i ought to do about it arthur for one thing, speak a little softer. Neighbor, I'm going to ask you to help me, to, to show a little neighborliness. What do you mean? 
Well, you see, I'm an artist, a bohemian. Everyone's ready to think the worst of me. But you, you're a respectable man. You're in business. No one would suspect anything of you. Just think of what a story it would make if I told them the truth. What a switch that would be. Arthur, what's keeping you? Uh, I, uh, I'm coming. Really, Mr. Earthly? Was dumping that poor girl on my terrace your idea of a decent Christian burial? I didn't have time to think. I had to get rid of her. And you're more accustomed to handling women than I am. Not dead ones. Arthur? Did you call the police? They were here, but I got rid of them. Uh, they don't suspect yet. What do you want me to do? Not much. Just help me get rid of the body. I'll do anything you say. All right, I'll call you at midnight. Be prepared. Prepared? Yes, old clothes. There'll be digging to do. Oh, uh, and one more thing. Uh, take care of this. My eviction notice. This is blackmail, Mr. Gallio. You're so right, Mr. Earthly. Yes, of course. Yeah, I understand. Right away. Who was that, Arthur? That was the boss. The big boss. Wants me to drive him to the airport. At this time of night? No. Planes leave at all hours, mate. That's going too far. I think she should have candles. No, Arlen. Yes. Whose body is this anyway? Oh, yours, you zombie, but I don't want it too well lit. That was my trouble when I was alive. Always too well lit. She does look like me, though. Makes me feel kind of sad. Poor Olive. You were a good girl. No one could say you were ever anything but kind and good. Whose fault was it that you ended up like this? Men, that's whose fault it was. Men. <laughs> Arthur, you're not going to wear that outfit to the airport. Why not? What would your boss think? You look like a tramp. Well, maybe he'll take pity and offer me a raise. You talk to him tonight about that vice president's job. Tonight's the perfect time to get in some spade work. All of you shouldn't be here. Don't you think you ought to go home? Is this? There are some dresses in the model's closet. Grab one of those and beat it. I want to go along and see the fun. Maybe you can show us how that can be arranged. Whose funeral is this, anyway? Go home, Olive. Ooh, there's Earthly now. Into the closet, Olive. Into the closet, Olive. Out of my apartment, Olive. Go home, Olive. Pillar to post, post to pillar. Where will it all end? Shh, quiet, Olive. I'll take this along for company. You do love company, don't you? Ah, what a well-dressed grave digger will wear. Please, I'm in no mood for joking. Well, there she is. You wouldn't want to have a last look, would you? No, thanks. I didn't think so. As a matter of fact, I was counting on it. Well, what are you standing around moping for? Get a move on. Do you want your rod? Quit talking so much and do as you're told. Of course I want my rod. Loaded? Sure, what do you think, dope? Is that young lady to be trusted? Better be. <coughs> I know the most perfect spot out in Westchester where we can bury the body. Westchester? Mm-hmm. Here's your rod. Oh, what's that thing for? Uh, better safe than sorry. Say, you better have a drink, old man. Steady your nerves. There's a bottle over there. Are you still here? I thought I told you to get that freight elevator. I don't think I know how to work it. Okay, halfwit, I'll go with you. You stay here.
Is that you, Gabriel? The stranger thing just happened. What's the matter? Oh, I feel faint. Oh, you better have another drink. But the bottle's gone. It disappeared and my back was turned. Ah, you're imagining things. No, no, no. The bottle was there and then... Ah, the you see? It's still there. <laughs> Too late. Oh, come on, no time to waste. Give me a hand. Here we go. It's a daisy. <laughs> oh, it's a sad world. Sick, transit, Gloria. What was her name? Olive. Well, goodbye, Olive. Goodbye, boys. Did you hear that voice? What voice? Earthly, you've got to steel yourself. You've got a tough night ahead. see you. Ah, don't talk so much. I don't know why I just didn't turn you in instead of helping you out like this. I guess I'm just a sucker for a guy in a jam. Had some pretty close shaves myself. Never murder, though. I draw the line there. Olive Jensen's death was a regrettable accident. Nothing more. And you know it. Ah. Red hair. Evidence like this could send you straight to the hot seat. Oh, well. Uh, maybe you better put it in the trunk. No, just blow it away. Oh, uh, well, you blow it. Oh, you blow it. <laughs> Case the street. Gotcha. Where do you think you're going to, a far? No, to a funeral. Very funny. What do you got in the trunk? A dead body. Oh, wise guy, eh? The judge will take care of you. No respect for the dead. Yeah, please, be quiet. Take it easy from here on, bud. Keep it down. 
Take care of that big shot. You got influence. You're not taking Olive to a dog kennel. Not Olive. She was a nice girl. I'm picking up Ravelli. I called him to have him ready. Your dog? At this hour? An alibi, my good man, in case anyone wonders what you were doing in the woods at this hour. And stick to it, pal, even if they drive spikes under your fingernails. Remember, we're in this thing together. No squealers. Hey, Ravelli. Hi, Come Ravelli. Here, boy. Come on, get in the back. Get under there, boy. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. If you see anything signal, I'll stand guard here. Gotcha. Two by two and a half by three and a half ought to do. Start digging. to the point, but reverend. Well, she was a good girl. She had a good heart. A weak one, but a good one. That's right. No one could say anything but that she was good and kind. That's right. Good and kind. Thank you, Arthur. That's exactly what Olive would want you to say. Here we go. Ooh. Wouldn't you like to do the honors? I think you should throw in the first space. Oh, no, no, thank Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Olive Jensen. How long has she been missing? Four days. Mm-hmm. Four days. Ever stay out before? Never more than three days. Mm-hmm. Suspicious circumstances. Description? Well, I thought this might help. It's several years old, but it's still very much like her. I'd sure hate to think the Greenwich Village murderer mutilated that. I wouldn't worry too much, lady. A dame like that could be missing five days under the most pleasant circumstances. But you will try and find her. Will we? Well, uh, here is my address and phone number. What's her address and phone number? The same. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to Olive. I hope she's alive. So do we, lady. So do we. Are you still here? I seem to be. Won't you come in? Where's David? Asleep. Asleep? Oh, we were up until all hours. He told me all about the funeral. I nearly died. Quite cozy, aren't we? Won't you sit down? How about a cup of coffee? I have some on the stove. No, thank you. I had my breakfast hours ago. Cigarette? No, thanks. You know, I wish I'd been at my funeral. I wish you had, too. Must have been a scream. Davy told me all about it. I never laughed so much in my life. You should have come back with him. I bet you missed me terribly. You're not going. Davy wants you to pose, doesn't he? Why don't you do it? You have nice eyes. Your legs are good. And that henna in your hair could be toned down. If I didn't know you so well, I'd say that was a dirty crack. 
You don't know me at all, and it is. What will I tell David? Tell him Xantippe has changed her mind about Rabelais. She prefers someone more discriminating. <laughs> Please, not again. You're not a child, you're a grown man. Ugh. Honestly, when I think of you, out in the rain at midnight, changing your boss's tire, wallowing in mud up to your elbows, catching your death of cold. Well, it's not my fault that we got a flat tire. I didn't say it was. You're always making issues, Arthur. Well, I feel better now. I think I'll go to the office. You'll do no such thing. If it hadn't been for your boss, you wouldn't have this cold. I have a notion to call and give him a good piece of my mind. Oh, no, no, May, don't do that. I'm going to get you some hot lemonade. You need something to make you sweat. Sweat? I've done enough of that already. Come high this year. Say, come on and eat. I want you out of here when Deborah arrives. I could kiss you for this. Oh, I hope she's not going to be late. I want to try something new, something entirely different. I wouldn't waste time planning it if I were you. Deborah's not coming back. Back? Was she here? Oh, hours ago. Oh. She's probably halfway to Philadelphia by now. Well, why didn't she wait? I don't think Deborah likes you anymore. She said to tell you Xantippe doesn't care for Rabelais either. Oh, fine. Oh, come on and have some coffee and forget Philadelphia, David. Go home, Olive. You should have gone home last night. I didn't have anything to wear. Well, you have now. Oh, I should have carried you home when I found you passed out instead of letting you sleep it off here. You're just like all the rest. You take the best years of a girl's life. Olive, go home. If I find you here when I come back, I'll throttle you. Come on, Ravelli. We've got to square things with Deborah. I'll go. I can take a hint. <laughs> What's that dog left on your terrace now, Earthly? Yeah, I wish it were only a question of a dog. This is murder. Don't tell me you took the law and dog in your own hands and killed it. Well, unfortunately, it isn't that simple. Look, here, read that. Have you seen this girl? Police are seeking the whereabouts of Olive Jensen, missing five days. It is feared she may be the victim of Greenwich Village murderer. Earthly, have you murdered this woman? I won't talk until I see my lawyer. Who do you think I am? You, oh, you, of course. Well, all right. Now, when did this happen? Well, it was done last night. What time, precisely? My wife's train got in at 10.15, and I had to get rid of her. Well, is murder going a little far to get rid of your wife? No, no, not my wife. This Olive person. If she was found in my apartment, my wife would have killed me. Don't you or your wife know any simpler way of getting rid of people? I mean figuratively. Figuratively? This is beyond anything figurative. Murder is a fact, a fact you can't recall. And without looking in any book in my office, I can tell you it's a crime to kill anybody in New York State. Well, I'm not entirely ignorant of the law. Now, how long was her, the body, cold? Ever since I met her. No, no, I don't mean cold socially. I mean cold physically. Oh, uh, about 18 hours. And you failed to notify the police? Well, I thought about it, but I didn't know what to tell them. I didn't want to get involved in this thing. Where did you hide the body? I folded it in half, neatly, and put it in an old trunk. Are you serious? And last night in Westchester, I buried the trunk behind the man's best friend, Kennels. Murder. Concealment. Attempt to evade the processes of law. Earthly, are you in your right mind? 
Don't get personal. I have to get personal. Do you think it's going to help my reputation if you go to the electric chair for this? Well, then sue my estate for damages. Ordinarily, I don't take criminal cases. Ordinarily, I don't commit crimes. So if you'll make an exception for me, I'll make one for you. All right. Now, when was the last time you saw her alive? About an hour ago. Well, her or her ghost. But you buried her in a trunk in Westchester last night. But I saw her in my apartment an hour ago. Even Houdini couldn't get out of a trunk buried in Westchester that quick. Well, you don't know all of them. What shall I do? Do? You've done enough already. Now, wait a minute. Let me think. Uh, listen, if you will follow my instructions implicitly, you'll have nothing to worry about. Really? Absolutely. I will take the entire responsibility, and you can forget the whole thing. Oh, uh, this is wonderful. Now, first, you must tell me everything. Deny it to everyone else. You never knew the woman. You don't know anything about a body. You have never seen a trunk. And if anyone questions you, you are to be shocked, hurt, and indignant. Well, it's about time. Not interested. Oh, Deborah, quit being so Philadelphia. I've been waiting for you all day long. Look, I've done 20 crossword puzzles. Congratulations. I never asked her to stay all night. I just couldn't get rid of her. You can't blame me for being angry when I find a woman making herself at home in your apartment. I was just as angry. I practically threw her out. Deborah, she's not my type. Don't you believe me? Oh, this is beginning to sound like a, a domestic quarrel. Well, I wish it were. I wish it were. Deborah, my tail is just around the corner. I could order striped pants and cut away this evening. How about it? Did you hear that, Rabelais? Your boss is proposing marriage. Let's make it a double wedding. Xantippe and Rabelais and you and me. Could I let you know at dinner? I'll stop by for you at 7.30. No. I'll stop by for you. Not that I don't trust you, but I'll stop by for you. Come on, Natalie. I'm supposed to be playing this, dear. Excuse me. If this comes out, I shall have made the greatest scientific contribution to the game of patience since, since Canfield. Oh! Oh! What's wrong now, dear? Seeing things again? Oh! Hello, Mrs. Oatsby? There's a body on your terrace. Sorry, I don't believe I heard you correctly. There's a body on your terrace. On my terrace? That's impossible. Can we help you? We thought we'd see you before we called the police. I can't imagine how she got there. Where am I? Hi, girls. Oh, oh, oh Lord. You're no, not dead. No. We thought you were. Help me get into the couch. In the oh, cupboard, there's some brandy. Bring it oh, to me. Oh, oh, just lie down here. Lie down here quietly. You've had an awful shock. I'll get a oh, pillow. Dear. Do you think you could have a sip of brandy? I'll try. Don't mind the taste. Just think of the good it'll do you. There. Feel better? Maybe just a little more brandy? Oh, oh do you think she should? Oh, it's a stimulant. Now, don't try to talk. Just tell us what happened. He tried to kill me. Mr. Galley? The artist? That bohemian? That monster? Did he strike you? Oh, please, don't make me talk about it. Maybe she needs a little more stimulant. Just give me the bottle. Do you want us to call the police? Oh, no, think of my family, my reputation. Oh, uh, are you a, a debutante, dear? Yes, I came out in 38. And I haven't been home since. Were you posing for that fiend? He begged me to pose for him. He told me he'd make me immortal. No punishment is bad enough for a man like that. I hope they string him up. Some ice water, my dear. Oh, oh my. She, she's fainted again. Oh. Now, now what? 
what? Oh, I don't know. I wish my husband oh. were here. He'd know what to do. Good evening, May. I've got a surprise for you. Maybe he's allergic to flowers. Well, that's what she meant when she said he'd know what to do. Oh, Arthur. Uh, uh, what happened? You fainted. I told you not to go out in your condition. How'd she get here? That galley old tried to murder her, then left her for dead on our terrace. Is that what she told you? I mean, she's not dead, is she? Oh, no, no, just unconscious. We gave her some brandy, and I don't think the poor dear's used to it. I wish galley and his dog would stop dropping things on our terrace. Shouldn't we call the police? Police? For heaven's sakes, no. Well, why not? <laughs> I don't want them to find her here. But why not? Well, they might want to question her. Our consciences are clear. Yeah, but uh, think of the notoriety. Uh, after all, I'm a businessman, a respected member of society, and my mother was a daughter of the American Revolution. This calls for action. What are you going to do with her? Where are you going, Arthur? The Gallio. Oh, no. He's a dangerous man, a murderer. He might kill you both. I'm not afraid. My, isn't he brave? Yes, but I think we'd better call the police. We might really need them now. Oh, uh, let me. Where is the telephone? In the bedroom. What have you got there? The body we buried last night. It's come back. But it's going to haunt you, not me. Uh, what's that? Olive's twin sister. It's a dummy. That's what we buried in Westchester, pal. Why, you double-crossing, you... Ah, uh, wait a minute. Just a minute. Remember, you started all this. From now on, keep your unconscious bodies off my terrace. I've got more to do and clean up after you. Well, why did you dig her up? Your lawyer dug her up, and he kept the trunk for evidence. Evidence? Mm-hmm. This wire came with the body. It seems you're about to sue me, Earthly, for blackmail, defamation of character, fraud, intimidation, and trespassing. I ought to punch you in the nose. I ought to punch you, leaving Olive on my terrace for my wife to find. Go ahead. You owe me a punch, I owe you one. Let's consider blows exchanged. You have a black eye, I have a bloody nose. Honor has been satisfied. And Olive has a place to sleep at all. Oh, no, you don't. I'm expecting Deborah. I've had enough trouble on account of Olive. Get her out of here. Where am I going to take her? Back to my wife? She'll call the police. Can't you control that wife of yours? Oh, I don't know. I never tried. I wish she was my wife. You know what I do? No, but I wish he was your wife. Well, that's your problem. But don't try leaving Olive here, because the next time I'll take her right back to May with a full explanation. I'll beat it. And take her with you. I've got to finish dressing. What happened next door? Don't you worry about what happened next door. That Gallio isn't going to bother us anymore. I told him what I was going to do if he dumped any more of his old dead girlfriends over here. But we've called the police. We? I did. Police? Why don't you two mind your own business? Oh. If you two want to know what's oh. good for you, you're going to learn to keep your noses out of your neighbor's affairs. You can get into serious trouble poking around where you're not wanted. Oh. Now go home and stay home. Arthur, what on you earth? You get your hat and gloves. What? You had... Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I was carried away. Uh, get your hat and gloves, dear. I was going to take you out to dinner. That's a lovely idea. What about the police? We called them because we thought you were in danger. May, didn't you think I could take care of myself? What kind of a husband do you think you've got? I'm beginning to wonder. Well, go get fixed up and I'll take you out to a nice air-cooled place. <laughs> Hey, where have I seen you before, lady? I remember she was the body in 10B, the artist model. That's right. Can't be you. They've murdered this time. 
They found another body? It's them old maids again. This time it's in 10A. If this one's a false alarm, we're gonna lock them two old biddies up. Uh-oh, just a minute, you two. We've got some questions to ask you. What about? Well, that ain't information, please. Oh, David, I'm... David, she's still here. <laughs> oh, just a dummy, darling, remember? Back from the grave to haunt her. <laughs> Olive. Dummy? Deborah, so help me. Earthly left her oh, here. Oh, fine. Deborah, you've got to believe me. Make it a good story, David. Take all the time you want. Oh, what's the use? Come on. Help me bring her to. She'll tell you. Snap out of it. Come on, Olive. Snap out of it. We know nothing about a body. We're shocked, hurt, and indignant. Those old maids must have been seeing things. Let's check their story with the old maids. Is that necessary? Yes, it's necessary. And you can come along just to see the job well done. It's no use. She's really out this time. Shouldn't we call a doctor? Her heart. Oh, she's got a heart like a racehorse. There, she's coming to now. Davy, darling, I'm back. Was it all just a bad dream? Olive, tell Deborah the truth. Tell her the truth now. I love him. You can't have him. Oh, that's all, Mr. Gallio. Listen to me, Deborah. I'll take you next door. I'll prove this by Earthly himself. She's out again. You'd better look after her. I'm leaving. Oh, Deborah, stick with me. You've got to believe me. I'll show you what I think of Olive. I'll take you right back where she belongs. I won't be a part of this monstrous lie. We both saw the body. There was an attempted murder, and Mr. and Mrs. Earthly knew it. They saw her right in their living room. We saw no attempted murder. We're shocked, hurt, and indignant. Well, these old ladies keep seeing bodies like black spots before their eyes. Liver trouble. He's lying. All of us saw the body. We saw it first from our terrace. That's right. Come here and I'll show you. I was in here playing solitaire. I stepped out for a breath of fresh air, crossed over to the rail, looked down. There it was. Ah! There it is again. Now tell me you don't see that, Mr. Earthly. Tell me that. Uh, this, is, this is where I came in. And that's exactly how she came to be there. You've got to believe me. Look, Olive is Arthur Earthly's girl. She doesn't mean anything to me. There he is. David Galliol. Arrest that man, officer. He's the murderer. Murderer? He's the one my husband's been shielding. I don't know why. But I've kept quiet long enough. Arrest him. Better come along, Galliol. Oh, what for? If you did what this lady said you did, we got enough on you to get your charcoal broiled. Will you kindly tell me what the charges are? Oh, you poor girl. Are you all right? Cheers, everybody. Having a party? Will somebody please explain what's going on here? I can explain the whole thing with the help of my friend and neighbor, Mr. Earthly. You leave Mr. Earthly out of this. How can I? Mr. Earthly is very much in it. Aren't you, Arthur? If Arthur's done anything wrong, it's all your fault. You and your dog and your women. I suppose you're the new favorite of his harem. My dear Mrs. Earthly, why don't you climb down from that stepladder of respectability and look at people at eye level? You might like them. Really? Has it come to this? When a decent married woman must stand in her own living room and be insulted by a, a woman of your type? Oh! Arthur! Arthur, she struck me! Oh, I'm sorry. You're sorry? I'm sorry I didn't do it myself. Oh. Sit down, May. He's out of his mind. I said sit down. What? Sit down. Oh, Arthur, what's come over you? I don't know, but it feels good. I started when I said goodbye to you Saturday. I've had a very exciting Saturday and Sunday. Hectic, but exciting. Not a dull moment. I drank and dined and listened to low-down music with a very entertaining young woman. She was crazy, but fun. Oh, Arthur! Don't interrupt me. It was only by accident that she spent the night here. And she changed that stuffy little guest room of yours all around. And it looked fine. But I put it back because you wouldn't have liked it that way. Well, I'm going to have the whole place done over. By Olive and Patricia Interior. That's a splendid idea. Yeah. And furthermore, I'm going to have a dog. I like dogs. Rabelais is about to be a father, and I'm putting in my bed right now for the biggest pup in the litter. It's yours. And furthermore, I never liked this thing. And there goes your pineapple. Officers! Officers! 
just do something, he's gone mad. You bet I've gone mad. I see you believe in sanity coming up. Of course I'm crazy. Crazy to put up with this all these years. Let me identify the pilot. Now look here, mister. We didn't come here to referee any family squabbles. Just tell us who was murdered and by who. No one was murdered by whom, and no one attempted any murder. It was all a big joke, a practical joke. Who are you? Olive Jensen's the name. Miss Olive Jensen to you. Olive Jensen, you're the woman who's been missing for five days. Yes, and why haven't you found me? What kind of a police department have we got? Why, I might have been lost forever. They found him. Oh, dear. The Greenwich Village murderer, captured in a rooming house on 96th Street. I always knew he was from uptown. There they are now. Two minutes late. Oh, dear. The earth is. Oh. May, you forgot the sugar again. Yes, dear. Good morning. Oh, David, you've forgotten the cream again. Yes, dear. He forgot the cream again. He's so forgetful. Mm -hmm. 